Welcome to Lord of Life and welcome to worship. I hope that the music, message, and prayers close the distance between us. It's important for everyone's welfare that we follow the guidelines of the CDC. By protecting yourself, you also protect others. And even though we can't gather in person, we can gather virtually. This is the fifth Sunday in Lent. Our choirs and musicians have prepared some outstanding music. The gospel is from John 11, the raising of Lazarus. This is the last and greatest sign of Jesus' power. It's also the last straw that triggers his arrest. The Lord of life gives life at the cost of his own life. Thank you for joining us in worship and for supporting the ministry of Lord of Life Lutheran Church. God bless you.
proclaim life over death by your great power and love. Return to the Lord your God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Turn to me and be gracious. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us from all sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy Gospel according to John, the 11th chapter. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. 
Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the religious leaders were just now trying to stone you, and you're going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I'm glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the people had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Martha said, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The people who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the people who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the people said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said, Lord, already there is a stench because he had been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I've said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, 
and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel begins with tragedy and ends with comedy. It's the story of the raising of Lazarus. As I read the gospel this week, I remembered my high school French teacher, Mrs. Beyer. Same last name, no relation. And what she said about French literature. What she said is that in French literature, the difference between tragedy and comedy is that in tragedy, everybody dies. In comedy, only a few people die. Why I remember that, I don't know. I can't remember how to conjugate verbs and to decline nouns. I can't remember if I want to go to the library, is it le bibliothèque or la bibliothèque? But I do remember the difference between French tragedy and comedy. C'est la vie. Today's gospel begins with tragedy. The tragic news that Jesus' friend Lazarus is ill. Lazarus and his sisters Mary and Martha are somewhat unique in the Gospels in that they are identified by name and they appear several times in the Gospel. They are very close to Jesus. They've probably hosted him in their home. They probably supported his itinerant ministry. And the Gospel says that Jesus loved Mary Martha, and Lazarus. And since they were so close, it does make you wonder why Jesus didn't jump on the first bus to Bethany when he got the news. He actually stayed put for two more days, heightening the drama. And by the time he arrives, Lazarus has been dead and buried in the tomb for four days. Four days, what's the significance of the four days. In the Jewish Talmud, that's the ancient commentary on Hebrew scripture, there's a proverb that says, corruption sets in on the third day after death. In other words, up until that point, a person may not actually be dead. They might be in a coma, they might revive, but after three days, all hope is lost. Jesus arrives on the fourth day. He meets Martha and the mourners, and she says, in effect, Jesus, you're too late. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Yet even now I know that God will give whatever you ask. What did Martha mean? She surely didn't expect Lazarus to walk out of the tomb. We know that because when Jesus says, your brother will rise again, Martha says, I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. You know that the core confession of the Christian faith can be summarized in that one word, resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus says. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet will they live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Martha then calls her sister Mary And Mary says essentially the same thing. Jesus, if you had been here, we wouldn't be going through this today. It's a tragic situation that families experience daily. A person is born, lives, and one day will die. And those who remain weep. Jesus wept. I think that's profound. The Lord of life feels the pain of death. He is moved to tears. And the people say, he opened the eyes of a blind man. Couldn't he have kept this man from dying? And then Jesus calls Lazarus to life. And he turns the tragedy into comedy. Turns mourning to laughter. He wipes away every tear from their eyes. And the raising of Lazarus is a sign of things to come. There are many ways to characterize the Christian faith. 
And they are all facets of the same stone. The prophet Micah said, what does God ask of you but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God? Paul put it this way, three things remain, faith, hope, and love. And even our secular core values encourage honor, courage, and commitment. But when you turn the stone, all of these facets turn on one center, resurrection. And resurrection doesn't mean that we avoid death. Just because God is present in our lives doesn't mean that we're immune from sickness or exempt from death. No, God is with us in the joy and in the sorrow. And what the gospel promises isn't life instead of death. The gospel says that God brings life through death. That one day, God will wipe away every tear from our eyes and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things will have passed away. God turns tragedy to comedy. Now, if you remember what my French teacher said, you might be wondering about this divine comedy. Remember, in French comedy, only a few people die. Well, in this comedy so far, only one person has died, that's Lazarus. And Jesus brought him back to life. But there is one more death. When Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, he signs his own death warrant. This is the last straw. Until now, Jesus was perceived as an itinerant preacher who could be followed or ignored. He was a teacher who taught with authority, but then we only hear what we want to hear. He healed the sick, welcomed the outcast, ate with sinners, and upset the economy of the culture. But those who were threatened just kept their distance. After all, we only see what we want to see. But now it's impossible to ignore The lame walk, the deaf hear, the blind see, and the dead rise. And the religious leaders rise up against Jesus. One of them puts it this way. It's better to have one man die for all than for all to suffer together. It's a divine comedy that continues next week with a triumphal entry into Jerusalem. A last supper a betrayal, an arrest, an execution, and death. And then on the third day, when corruption should have set in, resurrection. Not in spite of, not instead of, resurrection comes through death. The Lord of life is the resurrection and the life. Amen.
Our response today to the prayers of intercession is your mercy is great. Turning our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of life, bind your faithful people into one body. Enliven the church with your spirit and bless the work of those who work for its renewal. Accomplish your work of salvation in us and through us for the sake of the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you love the world you have made and you grieve when creation suffers. Restore polluted lands and waterways. Heal areas of the world ravaged by storms, floods, wildfires, droughts, and other natural disasters. Bring all things to new life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, show redemption to all who watch and wait with eager expectation for results of viral testing, for recovery from sickness, for relief from employment on hold, for separation from loved ones, and those in dire need of humanitarian relief. Come quickly with your hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you weep with those who grieve. Unbind all who are held captive by anxiety, despair, or pain. Fill us with compassion and empathy for those who struggle, and keep us faithful in prayer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, we give thanks for opportunities for this congregation to collaborate with our community in caring for the needs of our neighbors. Today, we pray especially for Faith Lutheran Church in Yuma and Pastor Glenn Larson. Strengthen our ties with one another, with local congregations, agencies, and services. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you are our resurrection. We remember all those who have died and trust that in you they will live again. Breathe new life into our dry bones that we too might live with you forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen.